Hello everyone, I'm here with Tech Motorsports and we're picking up what we left off at the last video and this is going to be concentrating mainly more on the reinforcement of the rear section of the car, being the uh, rear subframe, the uh, lower control arms and uh, the, uh, the control arms themselves, the brackets on the control arms. So let's look at the stuff that we end up getting. So one of the items that we've got was for the start tower. So this is powder coated. I originally was just going to bolt them on, but I am going to all the men, so I'm going to be grinding a lot of this stuff off. Um, and then what we have is the brackets to strengthen the arms where they bolt on, or the brackets of the control arms. So these will go on, technically they'll be going here on the side this way. So they'll be welded in. Um, and then what we also have is the lower control arm uh, brackets themselves or the reinforcement plate. So this one goes on the lower section of the, um, of the lower control arm and this goes from the uh, where the shock mount is at and up to the control arm right here so uh so that's that piece there and then what we end up doing is what we end up having to uh adjust the toe and camber is we got the eccentric stuff all these items are from uh, garage stick so we got that from them and um and then yeah and then our little our, our little plates so what i end up doing is i got i made sure i got my rear subframe it's all aligned uh because you will need to know to get these puppies straight up and down so that way they're not all crooked um, so what i end up doing is um there's a couple different ways you can go about doing this um if you go up let's say on the on the uh, camera one if you go up higher that's going to give you a little bit more of adjustment for for some toe um, for sorry for some toe for some camber what i'm going to end up doing is i'm going to be placing this in the center so that way we i have uh, the availability to to uh, give me positive and negative camber pretty much about the same amount so that's where i'm going to end up doing um, to get that done now what i end up doing as well is i went ahead and installed one of the bolts and i got it here already clamped down and i tightened it and what i end up doing was bringing the bolts down um, so I can get my vice grips on top of there, uh, getting it down and get in a neutral spot. And the reason why I wanted to do that um, is I wanted to make sure that it is in the center, but through the bolt. I was looking at just trying to put these in the center of the hole and to, to give me, you know, the actual equal amount. But what I noticed was it would throw the bolt off a little bit. So what I did was I just threw the bolt on, tighten it down, uh, level these through and now they're tacked into place and let me show you the reason why I'm doing it this way so you can see that they're actually not in the center of the, the slotted area so that's where I was kind of like which way should I go and I preferred to go this way because now I know the bolts going in there and it's going to give me equal adjustment forward or back or up and down so uh, let's take a peek at that real quick before I start doing any tack welding all right so here's the outer one right here um, you can see it's pretty much right about in the uh, center of the slot, just a tad bit off. Um, if you go to the one on the back side here, you can see that it's just not so quite in the center, but it's pretty much close. So you got there's more more material here on this side than it is on this side. So by putting the boat in place, I was able to make sure that. Uh, I got it right where I wanted and the adjustment would go all the way around. So uh, that's what I'm going to end up doing to all of them. So uh, so yeah, so let me get to uh, doing some tack welding and get them all in place. All right, before I get to the tacking, I went ahead and did one more time. I went ahead and made sure that she was level, my, my whole subframe, and then I made sure that each one of these are level as well. That way, make sure that uh, the adjustment is going flat. So, uh, so yeah, so uh, let me get to it. All right, so I got the the toe ones tacked in place on both sides. Uh, then I started working on the camber ones, and um, through the Garagex website, it does state uh, that you uh, want to make a, a line here and you want to cut these out. Um, and at first, I wasn't doing it, uh, thinking I was going to be able to uh, to get them in place. Uh, but what happens is this plate right here, when you try to get it level. Um, it physically the bottom section hits the uh, bottom and you can't get it uh, um, hits the, the subframe itself and you can't get it level so I'm gonna go ahead and get that cut as they state so I'm gonna get that done and uh, tack weld those in place and then fully weld them and then what I'll end up doing is I'll work on the control arm uh, bracket uh, reinforcement as well so uh, I'm gonna keep plugging away at it 
All right, so there we go. The subframe is now completely done. Oh, I, th I think it is. <laughs> oh, hopefully I haven't forgotten anything, but no, it looks like I got everything taken care of. Uh, so I got all of the, the camber and the toe um, little brackets installed and also the support, uh, the reinforcement plates for the, uh, uh, the control arms themselves. So, uh, so yeah, so at this point, it's, uh, she's all done. Um, just uh, touch base, these were pretty much straightforward. There was really nothing to it. Um, the only ones that just these, these two, the inner ones were just a little bit, uh, they're not straight, they're not level because of the, uh, of the, uh, the forming here of the, uh, the, se the center section of the uh, front cross member. So, uh, um, so yeah, that's it. So the next thing I'm gonna end up jumping on is going to be the control arms and getting that knocked out. And hopefully this little beast will start going back together here soon. So. Uh, She'll be sitting on all four wheels, so can't wait. Uh, I got some springs that I'm gonna throw in there. Um, hopefully it uh, brings the car down to kind of give me an idea how it's gonna set. Um, originally, we just I had blocks underneath it, and uh, I did find some spare uh, spare springs that I had that uh, would work on some coilovers that I had. Um, so I'm gonna throw those on there and see how it pans out. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna jump onto the uh, lower control arms now. All right, so here we are with the control arm. Um, here is the tube. Uh, I think I stated this maybe earlier. This little puppy goes right here on the strut tower and it goes right underneath the spring perch. So that one is where I'll clean that area up and I'll go ahead and get that uh, welded. But what I'm gonna end up doing first is I'm gonna work on the plate itself. So the plate here um, is not a directional, so you can get it either way, but what you gotta be mindful is on the holes. So this hole here is the drain, water drain. And then this one is actually where the sensor plug goes through. So you want to keep that in mind. So here's the sensor going down here towards the bottom section. So I know that my plate's going to go like this right on the back side back here. So let's take a look at the control arm real quick here. And I've already marked where she's going to go. And now she's, there we go. I'll just leave it like that. So pretty much this is where I'm going to end up having it and here's my mark where it's going to end up going. So I am going to start my weld from the um, from this side up here from the inside of the control arm and work my way and what's going to happen is as I tack weld uh, then I'll start tapping this down and bending it so it can be nice and smooth. Um, I've seen a couple other people do it a little bit further down to give it a step uh, but um, as garage sticks they want um, they prefer to have it here. I wouldn't say they prefer, but when they end up showing um, their their E30 arms, being the Z3 arms or E30 arms, they are welded up here to kind of give a smooth surface down here. So that's what I'm going to end up doing. So I'm going to go ahead and now uh, grind and clean up all this mess right here because this is some like rubber coating. So I'm going to get that going, get it all clean, and uh, start uh, getting it tacked and uh, formed into place, and start doing the full weld, and then work on the uh, the strut the strut brace one uh, or the shock one. So, uh, so yep, yeah, I'll get to it. Okay, so she is pretty much ready to be tack welded. And uh, what I got is I got it in place. Uh, <laughs> I almost, almost, I almost tack welded it in the wrong spot. Um, the ABS uh, sensor hole, I had it on the bottom here. Of course, when I had it turned over, I'm thinking hole on the bottom, hole on the bottom. Well, now that it's turned over, holes on top, holes on top. But uh, there is um, the ABS wire clip uh, holder. Um, that's a good telltale that uh, to put that uh, ABS hole there. So uh, so yeah, so right now I'm just gonna go ahead and start tack welding it and work my way towards this bin here and start uh, smacking it with a hammer to get it formed. And then once it's all said and done, if I'm happy with it, I'm just gonna go ahead and weld, uh, weld it all through and uh, be done with this one. And then I'll jump on the, uh, that, uh, the tube for the lower section of the shock. So yep, let's get to it. Well, the tapping was a little bit more of hammering. That's uh, it's pr pretty thick, so uh, there was no tapping. I had to actually bang that sucker in place. But uh, she got it all nice and formed, so I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, doing the, uh, the full complete weld.
Okay, so there she is. Uh, bottom all welded. Well, I was looking, I flipped it over um, so I could see if there's any, um, if I could see any gap through there because I wanted to make sure I, I got a, a good seal around it. And also to see where the where it lied because I, sometimes I like to go on the inside and do a couple of stitch welds uh, around the perimeter just uh, to give it that extra strength. Um, but uh, the gap is pretty, pretty big and I just don't want to be uh, throwing welds in there. So it looks good. So uh, I am going to go ahead and now work on the lower section. Go ahead and clean uh, the arm and the, uh, um, I guess the, the pole where, or the, uh, where the bolt goes for the, uh, for the lower section of the shock. So I'll get, uh, I'll get on that. Okay, so I got my areas where I'm gonna be uh, welding the rod to. So I have it on the arm here underneath the spring perch. And I also have it uh, right where the uh, lower section of the shock is gonna get bolted to. So uh, by looking at it, what I wanna end up doing is having this brace as far out to where the bolt bolts to on the lower section of the shock. Um, the further you go in, you start defeating the purpose of this whole uh, uh, reinforcement. So the closer you get it out to the strut, the, the shock, the lower section of the shock, the better you are. So I already have it in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, weld it. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get to it. Okay, so she's welded in. Uh, so this control arm is technically done now. Um, apparently we probably, or JR probably forgot uh, to get the sway bar link. So that's gonna come at a later point. So I know that these have to come back down again. Um, I still have the issue of where and how am I going to mount the rear sway bar because the E30, the OE E30 sway bar is not being used because of how I mounted the differential. So uh, we have to come up with another plan for that, which is uh, to be honest with you, the way the system set up, it shouldn't be too bad. But as I stated before, I'm gonna be looking at a Z3 or we just might just get a hold of the aftermarket one because uh, for the front section, I think we're gonna have to do the same thing. So the stock um, location for the front sway bar has been deleted. So I'll be creating something for that um, as well. So like I said, that that's uh, at a little point. Um, Mango is trying to get this thing up and running and a totally running chassis with a drive line. And so I can finish up a bunch of stuff uh, because what uh, one thing that we're doing is trying to finish up what we consider stage one of this build. Stage one is just pretty much what I've been working on this whole entire time is getting the engine, get our transmission in there, get the differential, do all the rears, uh, the uh, subframe reinforcements and all that stuff. And then of course, as you go, things pop up, um, you know, making some, um, some space for the AC compressor on the engine side rail. So I got that going for me, the uh, location of the string rod, the shifter, the radiator itself, and a couple of little, little odds and ends stuff that uh, I have to end up doing. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that will classify stage one complete. Um, and then he's gonna do a bunch of stuff to, uh, to the car, like underneath the chassis, to the drive line, you know, that kind of stuff. So, uh, so yeah, so um, uh, these stuff, like the sway bar stuff will come at a later point because no matter what, at the end of this, all of these are gonna be torn back down again and they're gonna get, all get powder coated. So that is down the road, but the down the road is not looking too far away now once I get stage one complete. So, and that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, so yeah, so technically the trailing arm or this one is, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one already. And then when I get done with that, what I'm going to go in and do the strut, the upper strut tower uh, reinforcement. I'm gonna go ahead and grind that down uh, the, um, uh, the red uh, powder coat, I'm gonna call it, uh, grind that down and weld that into place. And I think at that point, I will do, uh, I will go ahead and install the uh, spare tire plates, uh, which is, uh, that will then con con consider this section completely done for the, for the most part. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I'm getting excited about this. So, uh, so yeah, so let me uh, get plugging away with that and uh, stay tuned as there is more reinforcements um, which I will add, uh, still have to do the, the front as well. So, uh, so yeah, so I'll pick up that here, uh, shortly. Here we are. The spare tire delete has been installed, uh, stitch welded. I did the bottom side and on the top side, um, we'd show you on the top side, but unfortunately I totally forgot that I did not video before I put all the stuff back in or all the boxes and everything that we have for parts that are going to be installed. So, uh, 
oops my bad i was kind of all excited that i was done back here but uh forgot that part but anyways here we go the whole back end is completely back together now uh, like i said before the only thing we've got going on now what we have to wait for are the apples and the dry shops and then the back section will be done plus of course a couple of other items that i mentioned previously the sway bar there is a section on the upper um on the upper reinforcement plate for the shock itself uh, there is a small section that i could not weld all the way so i have to be creative and figure out a way how to go and stitch weld that little area so so yeah so technically for the back end of the car is done and i'm going to move, move moving forward of the car and start working on that one so this one is going to bleed into the reinforcements uh and some of the other odds and ends stuff that i need to do to the car so let's jump to the front of the car and kind of uh give you an idea of where i'm at and what i've got going on so far so let's get to that part all right so there's the uh, strut tower um uh, what I had to do is just uh, kind of grind here and grind over here on the back end to uh, make it fit a little bit better. And um, this one, they were moving forward or backwards, I forget, but I had to notch out this little area here on off um, both uh, uh, reinforcement plates. That way I wanted to make sure that when I bolt on the fenders that it's not going to go down into uh, this, uh, this reinforcement plate. So. Okay, so this is the end of part five, and uh, like always, uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, see you in the next video.